case study session for June 24, 2024. Um, uh, we have with us today, council members Kruver, Herrera, Benson, and Campbell. Well, the others are excused. Uh, we'll start with review of the June 2025, June 25th, 2024 council meeting agenda. <laughs> A lot of confusion. Uh, move on. All right. Thank you. So this is tomorrow afternoon's regular council meeting agenda. It is amended. Uh, we will start with your consent agenda. You have uh, one resolution for final action, and that is R2024-175. Uh, this is confirming the reappointment of two existing members to the Behavioral Health Advisory Board. You have one proclamation, actually it's a recognition under section seven, and this is a, a recognition of the council and the executive honoring deputy prosecuting attorney, Dan Hamilton for over 38 years of service to Pierce County. Under section eight resolutions, you have two items here. The first is R2024-172 S, and this is approving the homeless housing program 2024-2025 funding recommendations of the Human Services Department and the Homeless Document Recording Fee Advisory Group. Uh, this received a due pass as substituted at Health and Human Services on June 18th. And the other resolution is R2024-173. This is approving the Puget Sound Taxpayer Accountability Account 2024-2025 funding recommendations from the Human Services Department and the Birth to 25 Advisory Board. And this received a due pass at Health and Human Services on June 18th. Uh, moving to Section 9, Ordinances, you have two uh, items here. The first is O2024-524. This is adopting a new Chapter 957 of the Code entitled Endangerment with a Controlled Substance. Uh, this will be heard in public safety this afternoon. Uh, and there is uh, one amendment to um, discuss in committee for this one. Uh, the next ordinance is O2024-526, and this is ratifying a collective bargaining agreement reached with Pierce County Deputy Sheriff's Independent Guild Local 1889 Community Service Officers. And this received a due pass recommendation at rules on June 10th. Moving now to section 11, other business. There is a motion to authorize the finance department to pay an additional 10,100 $184 um, to the Washington State Association of Counties. And those are your agenda items for tomorrow afternoon's meeting. All right, any questions? None on the uh, agenda items. And we are joined by Council uh, <laughs> Member Morrell is from this, I think, be passing through. We're doing, we're doing council meeting agenda for the <laughs> Do we need to do <laughs> Do we need That's to? I'm sitting here. No, we don't need any motions. We're just okay. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> so I do see Council Member Hitchin buttons been pushed, which I think is Kruver. You're right, Council Member Kruver. Thank you, Chair. I am curious on this. Um, authorizing payment on the WASAC dues. Is that in, tr in the normal payment we would be doing or that has been withheld pending changes in bylaws? Uh, Julie Murray, Chief of Staff. So the reason you have the motion is that in the budget, the funding for WASAC dues was proviso to limit finance to the payment of $100,000 um, and any monies thereafter. Um, in excess of 100,000 would require approval by the council by motion. And so where you are today is there is the bylaws question um, happening, and I believe on Wednesday at WASAC's annual meeting, and there is a proposal expected to come forward to say that, um, that a county can remain in good standing if payment of 50% of their dues are made by the end of this month. 50% of the dues is around 110,053, I guess, $531,000. Uh, so the motion is to give then um, 
just sort of that amount that's in excess of 100,000, get that authority to finance, to pay, pay that bill so that we remain in good standing while I believe there's other conversations that'll be had about just the overall due structure that then would likely require some action near the end of the year for the second half. So was half with part of that withheld purposely or it's just the way we've always done it? Well, the the reason we're not doing 100% is because the option does exist to do the 50%. Okay, yeah, I get that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just curious if... Um, so that is not necessarily the normal course of business because normally WASAC isn't... Um, uh, doing a review of a more significant revision to their due structure. Mm -hmm. So it could be that by the end of the year, um, Pierce County as a whole may require a payment of less than what had originally been calculated at the 220,000. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to amendment. Uh, are we at amendments? Yes. Uh, although we're discussing the under review of committee, so we don't have any amendments for tomorrow. Not for council, right, at this time. Uh, grant authorization in awards? Not we have any? None for today? All right. I like when you guys set these up like this. <laughs> <laughs> review of committee, ag committee agendas for the week. Ms. Long. All right. Thank you. So this afternoon at 1.30, there is a public safety committee meeting. <clears throat> There's one proposal and a lot of presentations. The proposal is O2024524. This is adopting a new Chapter 957 of the code, Endangerment with a Controlled Substance. Uh, this is the one that has the amendment. Uh, and uh, final action on this is tomorrow, June 25th. Uh, so the first uh, discussion item or report is the Swift Water Rescue Report uh, with the Sheriff's Department. Next, we have Swim Safe um, with Parks and Recreation. Uh, the third is Puget Sound Energy Wildfire Program with Puget Sound Energy uh, and East Pierce Fire and Rescue. Next, we have Crime Rate Trends with the Prosecutor's Office. Uh, and the last is the Blake Legislation and Local Impacts also with the Prosecutor's Office. Tomorrow, June 25th, beginning at 9.30, uh, you do have an Economic and Infrastructure Development Committee meeting. Uh, there are two proposals on this agenda. The first is O2024527, and this is authorizing the prosecuting attorney to commence condemnation proceedings um, on the, a number of listed parcels uh, there. And this is related to, um, this is the acquisition of real property for County Road Project CRP 5763. This is 122nd Avenue East, 140. 6th Street Court East to 136th Street East. Uh, so that is the project at issue. Uh, this has a July 16th final hearing date. The other proposal is O2024529, and this is authorizing the prosecuting attorney to commence condemnation proceedings. Um, this is on a different project. It is the County Road Project 5965. Uh, this is a repair Emergency repair, 264th Street East, milepost 2.3 to 2.5. Um, this is bridge, a bridge. Um, and this has also a July 16th final hearing date. Uh, tomorrow at noon is your regular Tuesday study session. In addition to your usual agenda items, there is an executive session. Um, I believe this will be uh, remote, so we'll have to go back <clears throat> to our office and do a Zoom executive session tomorrow. Following study session is a closed session. Uh, and then at 3 p.m. is your council meeting. On Wednesday, the 26th, beginning at 10 a.m. is your performance audit committee meeting. Uh, and there is one report that's a follow-up report on the evaluation of boards and commissions. And that will be with Mr. Vetter. At 1.30 on Wednesday is a select committee on homelessness. And there are two uh, per presentations on that agenda. The first is measuring homelessness, provider performance, and system outcomes. And that will be with the uh, uh, Department of Commerce and Human Services and Finance. Uh, and then the other pr uh, presentation is a unified regional approach update. And that will be with Ms. Merrick from the council office. And those are your uh, meetings for the remainder of this week. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Yes. Yes, you do? Yes, oh, it's already green. Okay, cool. If you could press it again, then it actually does relight it up. Oh, 
So go ahead. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Chair. On the 264th condemnation, do you know what the notices were that were given if there was any response from the property owners when given notice of this action, pending action? I would. Is Mr. Swanson available for that? Or maybe Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Swanson, did you hear the question? Yes, I did. I have not gotten feedback on that or, or heard that there were. Um, I will I will make sure um, Letitia Neal is asked that and has that information ready for committee. Because I just, I don't know if they need that much for, it's not like it's a big bridge. It's just a big culvert. And I question, you know, I just want to talk to the property owners on my side of the street. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> seems, it seems they would only have one person who might be willing to buy land up under a bridge. So they might be very happy to get fair market value for maybe I want <laughs> inaccessible to know. land that they have to maintain. Might be that stability site we're looking for. Oh, Ooh. Mm. <laughs> good place for it under a bridge. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I, I have one for uh, committee chair Herrera. Uh, how long will your committee run this afternoon, evening, <laughs> and morning? It's going to be a long one in conjunction of some of the uh, in district meetings. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I'm just uh, no. Um, honestly, it's... you're not going to beat that many presentations. <laughs> <laughs> and it finished on time. It was, it was like five minutes over. Right? Five minutes over. <laughs> we were expecting about two One hours. hours over, so. <laughs> well, um, so the committee meeting is probably going to be a little bit longer today. We had some important things on there. We scheduled some of the swim stuff, some of the fire stuff, and um, swift water rescue because we're getting into that season. And, and you know, we'll watch out for our kids. And we're going to get some good information on that. And then la our last committee, um, our uh, last public safety committee meeting, we had uh, someone who couldn't present, and it's really important information that we needed to get out, so we're squeezing it in, um, and we're also getting, uh, we had an ordinance that was carried over, so and right. we'll be dealing with that today, so bear with us, but it's important information. Thank you. I, and, I, and I'm curious, and I know Chair Mello's not here, maybe you can, I think he'll be in for the committee, holding over the crime rate trends and Blake legislation, bringing them to a study session for all of us. Because those are things that really, I think all of us want to know about. We can always tune in and watch the committee, yes. But if you're tied on time or something like that, you might want to look at just bringing that into a study session because I think it's something that uh, we could all benefit from uh, we, updates on. And I I may change the agenda a little bit and put that important information up front because some of it might relate to the ordinance that may be coming up also. Hmm. We'll see. I'm not 100 percent sure, but we'll see. You have an hour or so to figure it out. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I believe we have an amendment. Uh, and so, uh, Miss Kelly, to uh, discuss the amendment that we have in the committee. Do we got a quorum? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Thank you. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Campbell, Andrea Kelly, uh, Council staff, you do have an, uh, an amendment to the proposal uh, for ordinance number 2024-524, uh, endangerment of the controlled substance. It would change uh, or add additional language under the penalty for violations, uh, uh, encouraging the prosecuting attorney's office uh, to look at alternative resolutions for those cases. Okay. Any questions on that? Uh, Council Member Kruber. Thank you, Chair. Do you know if that this amendment is part of the normal process, whether that is stated or not? Um, it, it does generally happen if for the prosecutor's office to look at alternative resolutions um, or defense counsel can bring it forward as well. So this is just to kind of make a point out to emphasize that which is already done. Uh, I believe I believe so. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chair. Vice Chair. Chair. <laughs> Um, thank you. Save comments for a committee. Um, and you should, I, I believe that, uh, 
uh, Chair Mello will be back for the committee meeting, so quorum shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So good. We're, we're um, at least that was my understanding. Perhaps not for the evening portion, but at least the afternoon portion of your committee. <laughs> Sorry. All right, back on track here. Yeah. It is a Monday. <laughs> um, Ms. Kelly, thank you very much. Um, and next we have discussion of administrative items. Ms. Murray. Thank you. Again, Julie Murray, Chief of Staff. Uh, I only wanted to note, uh, as I discussed last week, uh, Mina Hassani is going to be working. She's one of our interns on the equity notes and sort of the process and doing a review, literature review and jurisdictional review of other um, other places that do have equity notes and what we can learn from that and maybe improve that process. Um, what Tyler Zamara is going to do is really build upon the where we left um, the discussion at the council's re uh, retreat on kind of linking performance measures to the council's priorities. And we're gonna pivot a little bit um, away from I think what we had initially discussed at the retreat was sort of like how, how do we use these metrics to evaluate the council's performance in terms of meeting its priorities? Because I believe the discussion that was had at the tables was a little bit more comprehensive and what, and you can you can tell me that I'm in error on this uh, today, it was that that there there's a lot of different pieces of data that you want to look at that not necessarily is about the performance, but just information that you feel is necessary to develop policy as well as review policy. And much of that information um, it may reside in open Pierce County. It may be something that is from a state agency or a, a local partner that they're, you're looking at kind of a, a broader set of piece of information, but wanting to have maybe what I've told Tyler was kind of like a data book. Like what's the data that you want to review, whether it links necessarily to our performance, it's just about your priorities. And so a good example of that was um, in the group I was um, involved in, uh, which was on like substance abuse um, disorders, was there was data that from the Department of Health that both um, Council Member Mello and Hitchin saw as important, but it wasn't necessarily in open Pierce County, but it was about, you know, um, youth suicide rates, used rates of, of um, using uh, controlled substances, that that was information they wanted to look at. And it's not just to say, hey, what's our performance to our priorities, but is, is generally what is happening in this arena. So what I have tasked Tyler to do, because part of the um, uh, goal of the internship program is for them to get a kind of broad view also of like what we do in county government is to go looking at those priorities is go talk to the relevant departments who have authority on that and ask them the question, what's the data you're looking at? What are the things that you use to doing your performance? And then come back to the council member who is the chair of that committee and have a conversation too and see, is there alignment? Is there a different set of data that you wanna look at? But I think it helps inform you a bit to understand what the departments are looking at. But you can have, as the council, we can have a different set, but it is something, um, something to start the discussion you know, and hopefully, uh, and it may not be something that Tyler can complete during the timeline that he has, because he only has about three months, and we may just continue it on ourselves as the council, but to just sort of start that process and get the conversation going so that we can look at, we can have maybe hopefully by the end of the year, kind of the council's data book and understand what data is important to you, where is it coming from, how often is it updated, where does it reside, like who's the owner, so that we can then create sort of a, like that data book for you in a format and understand, you know, this is where it's coming from, this is when it's gonna be refreshed, so that you can have the option of looking at it um, as you look at sort of your priorities and your policy areas. So that's kind of the plan for Tyler. Um, and again, to do that, it does require some time of you <laughs> um, to be able to have that conversation, which is why I thought having him start maybe with the departments would help, you know, kind of move it along so that you're not starting with a blank page, that you can at least have the discussion from January and understand what's available in Open Pierce County, but also understand where the departments are coming from. 
Um, because that may be helpful for you just to know as well, is that this is the metrics they look at for success, or these are, these are the data points they're looking at when they're um, deciding, making recommendations to the executive. This is sort of their world. Um, that's just good information for you to have, but ultimately it'll reside or com uh, come to conclusion with what's the data that you find important as to council and you as members. So um, it'll start with the chair, but I'm sure there'll be other conversations to be had amongst the members, but it's sort of like take one cut and we can keep refining it, but we want to just keep that um, project going. And so I'm um, letting you know that to get your input on what do you think about that project and what, if there's any, you know, uh, recommendations, revisions, you know, you would like to have me, no, and incorporate into his project plan. It doesn't look like there's any questions or comments okay, at this time, but I think as always, we can uh, follow up with you mm -hmm. uh, offline okay. if we have any other thoughts that can come to mind. Okay, thank you. All right, any other administrative items today? No. Nope. Any other business today? Anything from council mm -hmm. members? All right, seeing no other business before the Monday study session, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.